All right, y'all. So unfortunately, this is a story that we have to cover today. Um, the article from ABC7, the headline reads, Mother Demands Justice After Placentia Barber Charged with Murder and Torture of Her Six-Year-Old Son. This was posted Thursday, September 5th, 2024. So... Let me give you a little bit of context and then we'll watch a couple of news reports and a couple of interviews. I'll read the official statement that the district attorney posted. But let me give you a little bit of context. So Chance, this little boy here, six-year-old boy, was just finishing his first week of second grade. Um, And he was dropped off at the barber shop to be babysat by his babysitter. Now, his babysitter is a man who happened to own that barber shop, so that's why he was dropped off at the barber shop because you know the the babysitter um, owned that barber shop. The mother of Chance met this man at church, I believe, and this man used to serve in the children's ministry, also used to serve in the prophetic ministry in some capacity. And for reasons that we'll get into in a second, he was eventually let go from the church before this incident took place or this tragedy took place. Now, after she, she being the mother, dropped her six-year-old son off. She gets a call at some point because this is happening um, at night. So she's working a shift, a healthcare shift, and she's working, you know, throughout the night, I believe. And she gets a call later into the night from the man who is babysitting her son. And this is not the first time that he's babysat Chance. This is not the first time. So there's al there's already an established level of trust but, and rightfully so, right? I mean, if somebody's gonna babysit your child, you have a, an established le level of trust for that person even before you allow that person to babysit your child. But also there's another layer of trust added on to it because they met in the church, right? So these are supposed to be, you know, two Christians um, who are living according to God. So you have that trust layered in there as well. The mother gets a call that Chance is on the way to the hospital. Apparently, he had been doing jumping jacks. He fell, passed out, hit his head. He's on his way to the hospital. A couple days later, he passes away. During that time, he was in a coma. The family took him off of life support. He passes away. I want to get into this first video from ABC7 just to further break down some of the details and then we'll continue our conversation. The grieving mother of the six-year-old boy beaten to death with a piece of lumber is speaking exclusively to ABC7. Her son's babysitter, Ernest Love, is charged with murder and torture. Orange County reporter David Gonzalez has the heartbreaking story. I was genuinely blindsided. You know, I trusted him with my son. Charlene Sephora's heart is crushed, knowing the person she believed would take care of her son, Chance Crawford, instead caused him unimaginable pain. He died a brutal death. It was brutal. He did not deserve to go out that way. Yes. You did that, man. See that? There's going to be a lot of stuff you're scared of, but it don't matter. You got to push through it. Okay. You this is one of the many videos Ernest Lamar Love sent to Chance's mom anytime he babysat. He came in my son's life just as a male figure, he taught him things. He helped him overcome certain fears that my son had. But on August 30th, Sephora's life began to crumble after she dropped Chance off at Love's Barbershop in Placentia before heading off to work at St. Joseph's Hospital. 
Later that night, Love called to tell her he was rushing Chance to the hospital. He did tell me um, that he was doing jumping jacks. He had him working out and he fell and hit his head. And that's what's hard for me because I believed him when he told me. So that's what was initially told, right? So he calls and says, hey, I had him doing jumping jacks. I had him working out. He got overly exhausted, passed out, hit his head, right? That's what was told. But then listen to what the accusations, accusations are and the charges that are being placed from the DA. Prosecutors say Love had beat the six-year-old with a piece of lumber for wetting his pants at a park, then poured hydrogen peroxide on the open wounds and forced him to exercise until he collapsed. How could you do this to a child? Like, it doesn't warrant what happened. Love, who went by Azariah, was part of Amazing Church in Lake Elsinore as a minister and prophet. He did the right things. He helped people move. He, you know... He helped give advice, like he's, you know, helped people, you know, start businesses. But he had been suspended from his roles due to inappropriate behavior with women. They never suspected he would be capable of doing what he's accused of. We poured so much into him and, and he failed us. He failed. He failed us. He failed our faith. He failed us. He failed Charlene. Most importantly, they say he failed Chance. Chance died on Tuesday after being declared brain dead and taken off life support. I want justice for my son because he doesn't deserve, he did not deserve that. This is just an absolutely heartbreaking story. Let me read um, the official release from the district attorney um, says he's been charged with murder and torture accused of beating him with a piece of lumber it said he's been charged with murder and torture he was babysitting chance after the first grader I'm sorry I said second grade he's only in first grade so after the first grader peed his pants at a local park. So he peed his pants at a local park. This is what started the entire scenario. It says the boy's mother was working the night shift as a nurse as a nurse's assistant at St. Joseph's Hospital while her son's babysitter drove the critically injured boy to Children's Hospital of Orange County early Friday morning. It says Chance Crawford, six, died from his injuries Tuesday morning or afternoon. Ernest Lamar Love, 41 years old, has been charged with one felony count of murder, one felony count of torture, and one fel felony count of child abuse causing death. He faces a maximum of 32 years to life plus five if convicted on all charges. He's pleaded not guilty and is being held without bond. So here's a little bit of the situation in more detail. On on Thursday, August 29th, 2024, Chance finished his third day of first grade. So I apologize. He did not even make it through his first week of first grade. He had just finished his third day of first grade. He was dropped off at Love's Barbershop around 6.30 p.m. so that Love could babysit him while his mother went to work at St. Joseph's Hospital. At approximately 1.30 a.m., Love is accused of carrying Chance into the ER at CHOC Hospital, unconscious and struggling to breathe. Less than three hours earlier, video surveillance shows Love walking into his barbershop with a large piece of, of raw lumber with a reluctant chance following behind him. So they have him on surveillance. Three hours before they got to the hospital, they have him on surveillance, walking into his barbershop with a large piece of raw lumber.
with the sweet little boy walking reluctantly behind him into the barbershop. Doctors at the hospital dis discovered that much of Chance's flesh was missing from his butt. Much of his flesh, leaving raw, gaping wounds, along with subdural hematoma, extreme brain swelling, and other injuries consistent with violent shaking. It also said that the little boy had been healing from a fracture on his shoulder blade. So I don't know how that took place, but he was also already healing from a fracture on his shoulder blade. Love is accused of beating the first grader with a piece of lumber. And that's a whole nother situation. That's a whole nother story that I don't have any details on. I can only speculate on how that fracture took place that he was already dealing with before the situation. I don't even want to get into that speculation right now. Um, it says love is accused of beating the first grader with a piece of lumber, then pouring hydrogen peroxide on the open wounds before forcing the boy to do push-ups sit-ups and jumping jacks so this is the thing this kid this baby it's in first grade he's at the park he has an accident he has an accident as children do if you have children you know how common this is children have accidents he's in first grade i don't know what this dude thought i don't know why this dude was so triggered but maybe you'll understand why he was so triggered later on in the video as we continue to unpack more about his past. He has an accident. Maybe in his head, he thought that if he beat him enough, he could potentially prevent any future accidents from, it, from occurring in the future. Maybe that's what he thought. Maybe that's what he thought. Maybe that's what he thought. And so he goes on to beat this child for having an accident. And then after beating him, forces him to do push-ups. This is a first grader. Forces him to do push-ups. Forces him to do sit-ups. Forces him to do jumping jacks. This is after you just whooped him with a piece of lumber that quite literally caused flesh to be missing. Think about the scenario that this child was in. Think about the panic. Think about the anxiety. Think about the exhaustion that this child, the trauma that this child was already experiencing before he forced them to do this workout. So now he's doing this workout, push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, to exhaustion, to ex exhaustion. I'm assuming without breaks, to literal exhaustion, to the point he collapses and hits his head. This is all because he peed his pants. He's in first grade. This is all because he peed his pants. None of it would have been justified whatsoever him him receiving a whooping for for peeing his pants completely unjustified him having to do a workout completely unjustified you simply handle that situation by helping that child get cleaned up letting the child know that it's okay assuring that child that accidents happen and letting that child know, hey, next time you feel the urge, now you know what's going to happen when you feel that urge, just let me know and we can go to the bathroom. That's how you would handle it as a normal human being who has even just an ounce of care or concern for a child, right? He goes on to say, or the article 
from the DA. So the official statement from the Orange County DA goes on to say that while his new classmates were celebrating the end of the first week of first grade, Chance's seat in his classroom was empty as he fought for his life in a hospital bed. Orange County DA Todd Spitzer said that words do not exist to describe the absolute terror this little boy was forced to endure, all at the hands of someone who was supposed to be protecting him, not torturing him to death. Now we as prosecutors will do everything we can to pursue justice for little chance and be his protectors in death that he failed to have in life. Wow. This is from KTLA 5. It says new details emerge in OC Barber charged in little boy's death. In other news tonight, some disturbing new details are emerging about a six year old boy's horrifying death that prosecutors say happened at the hands of his babysitter. The father of young Chance Crawford calls the suspect a monster. Sandra Mitchell joins us from the KTLA News Center with what she's learned about the case. Sandy. Well, we have learned that the suspect in the case does have a violent criminal record, including charges of child abuse and endangerment. In the Cerritos Park, where Chance Crawford celebrated his fifth birthday, there is a growing memorial today. His dad tells KTLA Chance was a happy child. Chance was like a, a bright kid. Just very outgoing, smart, funny, and just love just just talking about just a whole bunch of things. But today there are disturbing new details after investigators say Chance was killed by an abusive babysitter. And I don't know the extent of uh, I don't know the extent of the relationship between forty one years between this dude, Ernest Lamar, and Chance's mother. I do remember her saying in the interview that Ernest was, you know, a, a manly figure in her son's life and taught him a lot of lessons and helped him get over a lot of fears. I'm not sure to what extent the relationship that they had was. Um, my question was, you know, where his where where is his father at? Um, I don't know the full story of how involved his father is, um, but you know, and, and that none of my business, right. But I think it's so important to value the family dynamic that honors God, which is being married, having children and marriage. Otherwise, you open up the door to these situations where you have another grown man watching your children. And unfortunately, this ended in the worst way possible, right? Now, this dude already is a suspect, like we talked about for more for murder, tor uh, torture, and child abuse, but this is not his first time facing similar charges. Harold Ernest Lamar Love now charged with murder, torture, and child abuse. And KTLA has confirmed Love does have a previous criminal record. Back in 2016, he was charged with corporal injury on a child. 2016. Corporal injury of a child, he was found not guilty. Child abuse and endangerment, he was found guilty. Corporal injury of a spouse, he was found guilty. Disorderly conduct, he was found guilty. Corporal injury of a child. So that's what he was accused of in 2016. Corporal injury of a child. What is that exactly? Corp injury. To a child. Corporal injury. 
an intentional or deliberate act done to inflict serious bodily harm on a child that results in a traumatic condition. So this is what he was accused of of 2016. Ultimately, he was found not guilty. But if you remember, he was found guilty of a very similar case or the similar, the same case against his own spouse, right? So guilty, guilty to disorderly conduct, and then guilty of child abuse and endangerment. So found not guilty of corporal injury, but found guilty of child abuse and, and, and endangerment. What's the difference? What's the difference? Versus child abuse and endangerment. How is child endangerment different from child abuse? Both laws punish intentional or willful or or willful harm to a minor, but unlike abuse, child endangerment does not require the infliction of physical injury on a child. So he has a history of abuse specifically to women and children. And I, I was talking to my wife about this today. I was talking to my wife about this, you know, not fully knowing the people who we allow to be around our children. And I don't know, I like it's it's tough because like I said, she had an established level of trust with this man on many levels, you know, meeting somebody at a church, seeing how they interact, probably other people vouching for him and whatnot, feeling like you can trust him because, you know, he's a Christian. But then not fully knowing this individual's backstory and this in individual's background and that he was literally a convicted you know, felon. I believe these are felony cases, are they not? It just speaks to the importance of knowing who's around your children. But furthermore, like I was saying, it speaks to the importance of protecting the family dynamic as God intended. Let's continue. He was found not guilty of that, but was found guilty of child abuse and endangerment, corporal injury on a spouse, and disorderly conduct, now charged with killing little chance. Love is accused of beating the first grader with a piece of lumber and then pouring hydrogen peroxide on his open wounds before making him do push-ups, sit-ups, and jumping jacks until the boy collapsed. Investigators say Love met the child's mother at Amazing Church in Lake Elsinore. A church leader says Love was suspended from the church because of inappropriate relationships with women. A former church member who wants to remain anonymous tells me the alleged killer was part of the children's ministry and he had an anger issue. I know he was kind of stern from what I noticed and he was also, uh, you know, he would get angry about different things. But I never really seen him take it out on the kids. Chance's mother says she once considered Love a friend and she trusted him with her child. Love is being held without bail. He's a monster. He's a monster. I'm sorry. He deserved whatever it is that God gives him. I'm going to let God handle him. So that suspect, Lamar Love, has made his first court appearance. Again, no bail in the case. If he's convicted, he could face life in prison without parole. Live in News Center, I'm Sandra Mitchell. Rick and Chance's father said um, 
the world the world was blessed to experience you. I lost a son yesterday. Chance's father, Vance Crawford, posted on Facebook. The anger I feel is unmatched. Daddy loves you, RIP. His aunt stated, um, the epitome of beautiful. Chance's aunt, Destiny Crawford, wrote on her Facebook page, the world was blessed to have experienced you. Rest easy, beloved nephew. And this is the actual post that his father posted on um, on Facebook. You know, having myself having children the same age as Chance, I could never imagine doing anything even remotely close to what happened to him. There is not an ounce of malicious intent in a child's body. They are filled with love. They are filled with joy. They are filled with excitement, with happiness. Do they make mistakes? Of course, they're children. Adults make mistakes. These are children. We're supposed to be protecting our children. We're supposed to be raising our children up to know the Lord. Not taking their life. Yeah, man. Um... There's a GoFundMe if anybody's interested. Um, looks like they need 25,000. They've got 24,000, so they're right there. So if anybody wants to support the GoFundMe, I'll put the link down below in the description. Um, you know, I pray for his family, for his mother. Um, I pray that justice is served in this case. And Lord, I, I just pray that you can protect the hearts of your people, protect the hearts of his family. Give them supernatural peace in knowing that your arms are wrapped around this little boy in heaven. in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. I'll put the link down below in the description. Um, if you guys want to help out. All right. All right, y'all. I'm out.